In this video, we are going to discuss one very important grammatical topic. We are going to talk about imperfective and perfective verbs in Russian. It's crucially important to understand the difference between them if you want to speak Russian fluently. So I hope this video will be helpful for you. If you find it useful, please let me know with the likes and comments. They are very important for me. Hello, this is Anna. I'm a Russian language teacher from New York City. It's very nice to see you in my YouTube channel. The first very important fact that I would like you to memorize and to realize is that all Russian verbs, pretty much all of them, exist in pairs. So in Russian, we physically have two words for any action in English, in any other language. So we physically have two words for to buy, to eat, to sleep, to take a shower, to have breakfast, to have dinner, to watch TV, to read, you name it. Pretty much any action that you can name in English in Russian can be expressed with two different words. Sometimes they are very similar, sometimes they are completely different. Those two words, this pair, is called the imperfective and perfective pair. They are different, so to say, aspects. The first of the pair, the imperfective verb, denotes the action that is in process or is habitual, so it hasn't been completed yet. The second of the pair, the perfective verb, denotes a one-time completed action. We're going to look into this later in this video, but that's just for you to understand the general concept. Let's first look at how the imperfective-perfective pairs can be formed. There are a few ways. The first one, a very common one, is to attach a prefix to the perfective verb. There are a few prefixes that are very common. Let's look at a few examples. For example, we have завтракат, to have breakfast. Завтракат. So, завтракат means to have breakfast habitually, usually, or maybe right now. It depends on the context. If I add по, I will get позавтракать. So, that means to have breakfast one time. Завтракать, позавтракать. Or maybe думать, to think, подумать, to think about something one time. Or звонить, to call, позвонить, to call one time. There are other prefixes we can use. For example, for the word писать, to write, we need to use the prefix на. So писать, написать. Писать is to write something habitually, написать is to write something one time. Or maybe лить, to pour, pour water, налить, to pour water one time. Or maybe the prefix с, есть, to eat, съесть, to eat something one time, есть, съесть. Or делать, to be doing something or to do something habitually, сделать, to do something one time. Another prefix we could use could be за, например, смеяться, to be laughing. Засмеяться, to start laughing. So you see, there are different prefixes that we can use. Unfortunately, there is no logic to that, so you will have to learn them by heart. Да? So you just have to know that it's писать, написать, есть, съесть, звонить, позвонить, завтракать, позавтракать. Да? This is pure memorization. It's not too hard, you just have to put some time and effort into that. Another way to form imperfective perfective pairs is by changing something in the middle of the word. For example, to begin, начинать, to begin something one time is начать, начинать, начать. You see, we kind of shorten this word. Or заканчивать, to finish, закончить, to finish one time. So заканчивать is habitual, I usually finish, закончить is to finish one time. Or maybe принимать, принимать душ, да, to take a shower every day. Принять, принять душ, to take shower one time. Or опаздывать, to be late habitually, опоздать, to be late one time. Sometimes this change is really tiny, it can be only one letter of difference. For example, in the verb to receive, получать, получить, да, you see получать has the A, and it means to receive habitually, like я получаю много писем, I receive a lot of letters. Получить is to receive something one time. 
Я получила письмо. I received a letter. I hope that makes sense. The last group is the smallest one, and in this group the imperfective and perfective verbs do not look alike. The most common example is maybe to take. Брать, взять. Брать is to take something habitually. I always take an umbrella. Я всегда беру зонтик. Взять is to take something one time. Я взяла зонтик. Another example to say, to speak. Говорить, сказать. Говорить, да, to speak habitually. Сказать, to say something one time. So, once again, three ways to form imperfective perfective. Add a prefix, change something in the middle of the word, or just two different stems completely. As they have already mentioned, this is pure memorization. So you have to learn those pairs by heart. Just like a lot of us learned irregular verbs in English, do, did, done, go, went, gone, you have to do the same thing with Russian imperfective perfective verbs. That just sit down and memorize them little by little. I don't know, one pair a day, five pairs a day, as many as you can. But that's crucially important because if you don't know the pairs, you will not be able to speak fluently because those aspects are crucial for the Russian language and they help us express different meanings. I want you to remember another very important point. Imperfective verbs, so the first of the pair, will have present tense, past tense, and future tense. So they have all three tenses. The second of the pair, the perfective one, will only have past tense and future tense. Perfective verbs denote one-time action, the action that completed in the past or will be completed in the future. And it is against the logic to use present tense here, right? An action cannot be completed in the present. It's either completed already or will be completed. So imperfective has present, past and future, perfective only past and future. Which brings us to a nice conclusion that if you need to use the present tense, you only have one option, the one that is in the imperfective, right? So that's a nice thing to remember, nice thing to know. Now let's compare the imperfective and perfective verbs. Let's start with the past tense. So as I said, imperfective means action in process or habitual action. It really depends on your sentence. Perfective means a one-time action that has completed. Let's start with the pair читать, прочитать. У меня есть книга. И я могу сказать, вчера я читала книгу. Да? То есть я читала. I spent some time reading. Maybe I'm here. Да? Вчера я читала книгу. Но это значит, it means that I'm not done yet. I spent some time reading, but I still have that many pages. Я читала книгу. How do I know that I'm not done? Because читала is the imperfective verb. But if I say вчера я прочитала книгу, it means that I got to page 702. I'm done. Я прочитала книгу. Прочитала is the perfective verb, means it's completed. Let's take another pair. Есть, съесть, to eat. So for example, вот. У меня есть ягоды. Я ем ягоды. Да? Вкусные. Mm? Все, я съела ягоды. But let's say my friend saw me and he or she will say, hmm, Аня ела ягоды. Anna was eating berries. Yela here means that he or she saw me in the process of eating those berries. Anya yela, she was eating. Anya съела ягоды means Anna ate them. Gone. No berries. Или писать, написать. To write. Я могу сказать, утром я писала новый курс. In the morning I was writing my new course. Утром я писала новый курс. Am I done with the course? No, I'm not. Да? But I spent some time writing this. So I'm using the imperfective verb to show this process. Я писала курс. But let's say I'm done. I wrote the whole course. Я написала курс. Вот он. 
Here it is, да? Вот он, вот мой курс. Я написала новый курс. Done. То есть я надеюсь, что вы понимаете. I hope you get this. Imperfective action in process. Perfective one-time action. Imperfective can also mean habitual actions. Let's look at the past tense again. Я скажу. Когда я была маленькая, я ела конфеты каждый день. When I was little, I used to eat candies every day. Я ела. Да? So it was some habitual action in the process. I used to eat. Or oh, when this quarantine is done, we will be out and we will say Во время карантина мы смотрели много сериалов. We watched a lot of TV series during the quarantine time, да? Мы смотрели много сериалов. So, it's not that we were sitting and watching non-stop, да? But we used to watch, we watched habitually. As opposed to, я посмотрела новый сериал. I watched a new series, I completed it. So, the pair is смотреть, посмотреть. Я смотрела means either I was watching or I used to watch or I watched habitually. Я посмотрела means I watched one time. Now let's look at the future tense. If I ask you how to form future in Russian, most likely you will tell me using the word буду. Да? Я буду, ты будешь, он будет, plus the infinitive. Which is correct. But this is the imperfective future and it's probably not as commonly used as you think. How often do you say that you will be doing something? That you will be in the process of something? Well, maybe завтра я буду готовить. Tomorrow I'm going to cook. Да? So I will be in the process of cooking. But in my opinion, a more common future in Russian is the perfective future. Because we speak about the actions we're going to complete in the future all the time. I will make it, I will go, I will buy, I will cook, I will watch, etc. So we speak about facts, not processes. That's why it's important to know the perfective future. Good news! For the perfective future, you don't need to use the word budu or budish or whatever. You simply need to conjugate the verb. For example, let's take the pair делать, сделать. If I say я буду делать задание, it means I will be doing my homework, my task. Ну, например, завтра в 5 часов я буду сидеть и буду делать домашнее задание. I'm gonna sit and I will be doing my homework. So I emphasize that I will be in the process. That's why I say я буду делать, I will be doing. Но if I want to say I will do my homework tomorrow, I don't mean the process here, I just mean the future fact. And I will say я сделаю домашнюю работу завтра. A reminder, the pair is делать, сделать, да? That's why я сделаю means I will do, I will complete it. So, if you look at this, you will see that I simply conjugated the word делать, делаю, делаешь, and attach the с in the beginning. Я сделаю means I will do. Я буду делать again is I will be doing. Я сделаю, I will do something one time. Another example. Завтра я буду готовить пирог. Приходи, поможешь мне. I will be making a pie tomorrow. Stop by, you will help me. So I emphasize the process here. Я буду готовить пирог. Я буду делать пирог. As opposed to, hmm, завтра я приготовлю пирог. I will make a pie tomorrow. I don't emphasize the process here. I emphasize the fact. I'll have the pie tomorrow. I'll make it. Я приготовлю завтра пирог. The pair here is готовить, приготовить, to make, to cook. Да? So, приготовлю, I will cook it. You know how to conjugate готовить. Я готовлю, ты готовишь, они готовят. So, to form the perfective future, you use the second of the pair, приготовить, but you conjugate it the way you do with the imperfective. Я приготовлю, ты приготовишь, они приготовят. Or, one more example, звонить, позвонить to call somebody. Да, if you want to say I will call you, you will not say я буду звонить тебе. It means you will be calling me habitually. Да, that's annoying and strange. But I will call you, я 
позвоню тебе. I will call you one time. Я тебе позвоню. Да? I simply use this, the perfective of the pair, позвонить, and conjugate it just like I do with the present tense. Я позвоню. But I know that позвоню is the future tense. I will call you. Ну, and let's look at just one more example. Let's take the pair начинать, начать, to begin. Начинать uh, is the imperfective, начать is the perfective. So if you would like to say, let's say, we will start a meeting at 7. You will not say, мы будем начинать. Because that means that you will be starting and starting over and over again. Because that means habitual action in the future or process in the future, which is really strange. Да? You will say, мы начнем встречу в 7. Начать is conjugated, я начну, ты начнешь, он начнет, мы начнем. So, мы начнем встречу в 7 часов. You will start it one time. Да? Мы начнем встречу в 7. We are speaking about the fact. All right, so I hope that this topic became a little bit more clear to you. And if you found this video useful, please let me know with your likes and comments. Ну что, на сегодня все. Спасибо большое. Увидимся. Пока-пока.